Welcome to Middle School Science. I'm Mrs. Mathis, and today we're going to learn the three most important skills you will learn in science class. But before we do that, I want you to ask yourself, why is science important to me? Take a few moments, pause the video, and think of some examples of science in your life. How many examples can you think of? Look around yourself. What do you notice? What would disappear if science didn't exist? What technology would you have to live without? How would you know that your water is safe to drink? Where would you go to get medical treatment if you got sick? In the 21st century, we can generally trust that the food we eat, the water we drink, and the medical care we receive probably won't harm us, all thanks to science. There are so many fields of science and important discoveries that I don't have time to mention but keep an eye on the world around you. If you look hard enough, you will find the impacts of science just about everywhere. But what do scientists actually do? A group of educators and scientists came up with this list of eight science and engineering practices that all students should learn. As your teacher, I will help you learn all these skills throughout the year, but to make it simpler for you to remember, let's break them into three big categories. Wonder includes all of the things that scientists ask questions about. Investigate is what they do to answer those questions. And communicate is what they do when they find an answer and want to share it with the world. Let's take a closer look at each of these categories, starting with wonder like a scientist. When scientists see something in the natural world, they don't just look at it and move on with their day. Instead, they ask questions about what they observe. What is that? Why is it behaving that way? Where did this come from? How does it work? Science is not about having the answers. It's the process of searching for answers. And that all starts with asking a question. Once you have your question, it's time to start searching for answers. Religions search for answers in holy texts and stories. Philosophers search for answers in reasoning, discussion, and thought experiments. Business owners search for answers in surveys and sales. Scientists search for answers by investigating. Investigations don't always look the same. Sometimes it makes sense to investigate by making repeated observations. This is a great way to investigate things we can't control in a lab, such as wildlife in its natural habitat, outer space, volcanoes, earthquakes, and more. Perhaps the question you're investigating has already been researched. Then you can just read some science articles to find the answer. Other times, we can use a model to investigate. Maybe it makes sense to build a physical model if you're testing the strength of a bridge. But when you're modeling a weather system, it makes more sense to create a computer model. You can test these models and then use your findings to better understand the real thing. And of course, scientists also do traditional lab experiments to investigate their questions. When scientists have finished their investigations, it's time for them to communicate their findings. You'll notice that I've written, communicate like a scientist, but better. I added that last part because scientists aren't always known as the best communicators. Scientists often talk in their own language, just like any specialist. Let's use sports culture as another example. American football is very hard for foreigners to understand because there are so many unusual terms like red zone, scrimmage, halfback, gunner, flea flicker, shotgun, hail mary, and more. And that's not really easy to understand right away. Science is similar. Scientists use a lot of Latin and Greek terms, and they're all used to talking to each other, thinking in similar ways, understanding the world around them in similar ways that they often have a hard time communicating with the general public. They don't always do a good job of describing science to non-scientists. So I'm going to challenge you to do even better than the average scientist and always keep your audience in mind. So when you communicate, 
yes, sometimes you will just be using uh, a scientific paper and you will learn how to write scientific papers in middle school. Sometimes you'll have to make a graph to show your data. Other times you might be asked to create a figure and caption it so that you can have a visual of how this scientific phenomenon works. But sometimes we communicate in other ways. It's so important that not only are we communicating science regularly with our friends, uh, with our family, through science fairs. Uh, if you're a science communicator, somebody like Bill Nye the Science Guy, Neil deGrasse Tyson, they share it with the world. Okay? Uh, even memes count as communicating science. It's important that we're not just talking about science every day, but that we're communicating effectively. Okay, and however you do that, that just means that you're communicating in a meaningful way that normal people, non-scientists, can understand and learn from. I'd like to leave you with this quote from Carl Sagan, who was an amazing science scientist and uh, science communicator. Science is a way of thinking more than it is a body of knowledge. This means that it's more important that you learn the science skills than memorize the science facts. At the end of the day, if you can Google it and get a quick answer, then there really isn't a need for you to focus super hard on learning it. Now, I will say facts and vocabulary are important. They're important in building a strong understanding. There are some things that you just need to know but they're not the number one most important thing that I want you to take away from learning science. I want you to learn the skills, the wondering, the investigating, the communicating. If you can do all of that, you will be in great shape for high school science. Next time, we're gonna practice wondering, investigating, and communicating about natural phenomena. Until then, pay attention to the world around you and stay curious, kiddos.